For number 11, we are testing the difference of means. We got independent samples here, and we want to see if our first mean is going to be less than the second population mean. So your null hypothesis is always that they're equal, and our alternative hypothesis was given here. So I'm going to jump into StatCrunch using this data here, and So you go to stat, t stats, two samples, and then with summary, off the screen here, with summary, and then you enter in the summary statistics. Make sure you don't have pool variances clicked. We're doing a hypothesis test. We were checking for less than. And then when you hit compute at the bottom, it'll give you your p-value. So the likelihood of samples like the ones we got are about one out of every thousand, which is pretty tiny. And that 0 .001 is less than our alpha, so we are going to reject the null hypothesis. For number 12, there's a lot to read here. Basically, we um, are trying to test whether teams score more runs when they use a designated hitter in place of their pitcher batting. So we took samples of both situations. They're in a table here. And we'll jump into that in a bit. But our null hypothesis is that the average run scored is equal, whether they um, use a designated hitter or their pitcher bats. Our alternative hypothesis is that with the designated hitter, they will have, be greater than, they will score a higher average runs than when they have their pitcher batting. So uh, here's the table of all um, the games played with each situation with the designated hitter and without. Open that in stack crunch. And we're going to go to the T stats. We got two samples. And we have our data here. So we're going to use with data comparing the with the designated hitter to the without. We do not want to pull our variances. We only do that if we could somehow verify that our population variances were equal. and We can't verify that. And we're checking for greater than here. So we we'll hit compute. It gives us our p-value of 0.0216. So if our means were actually equal, there's about a 2% chance that we would have pooled samples like the ones we did. Not a very high likelihood. And we were checking with our alpha being 0.05, and since 0.02 is less than 0.05, we are going to reject our null hypothesis. For number 13, we're comparing the amount of leisure time between adults with no children under 18 and then adults with children under 18. And like with any comparison of two populations like this, any hypothesis test, we need to start by identifying our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. And there's nowhere we need to enter them in this particular problem, but you'll need to understand what they are in order to answer the second part here. So your null hypothesis is that the two means are equal. Adults have the same amount of leisure time whether they have kids or not. Our alternative hypothesis would be that adults without kids have more leisure time. So we're going to use the data from our sample here to check whether um, we should reject the null hypothesis or not. So let's jump into StatCrunch and we're comparing means. We have two samples and summary statistics. Enter in the information from your samples. Make sure you do not click pool variances. Make sure it's unclicked. And then we're creating a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval, and hit compute. And you'll be given the lower limit and upper limit of your confidence interval. So we are 95% confident that the difference in the means, the difference in the amount of leisure time, is in between these limits here. And zero is in between these limits, 
and zero would be if the two means were the same. You subtract them, you get zero. And since zero is within our confidence interval, there's not enough evidence for us to uh, reject our null hypothesis. So we're going to conclude that there is insufficient evidence that there is a significant difference in the number of leisure hours. For number 14, comparing two means from independent samples, when we're comparing the pulse of men to the pulse of women, and our null hypothesis is that their pulses would be equal, their average pulse, our alternative is that the men's pulse will be less than the average women's pulse. And notice your table of data here and also the calculations that are listed below it. So identify the p-value, and the p-value is listed here, it's 0 .0047. And so look at what your alpha is, and my example here it's 0 0.02. Since our p-value is less than alpha, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And then the next part is create a 98% confidence interval, which is given. And then interpret that, we're 98% confident that the mean difference between the pulses is within this confidence interval. And since these values are all negative, the lower and upper limit are negative, that means we're 98% confidence that the difference, if we subtracted the means, would be negative. And that's only going to be the case if the second value you subtract is larger than the first value, or in other words, men have a slower pulse and you subtract the higher pulse for the women and you get a negative answer. We're 98% confident that we're going to get a negative answer when we subtract the difference of the means.